Now we need to discuss the very familiar, probably to many of you, difference between synchronous and asynchronous communication. So let's say that you are a web user out here and you are going to load some web page. So you go over to the web server. So let's just call this Apache or maybe even IHS. This could be IIS. You get the idea. When you are waiting for the response for a command, so a command being like show me the web page, you are entering into the world of synchronous communication because you are not going to be able, you are not going to be able to continue on your work until you get a response back. So you send off this response here and you were just sitting there waiting, literally waiting. And when the web page doesn't come back, you know how frustrating that can be. That is synchronous communication. Now, the opposite of that is what's called asynchronous communication. And you could imagine this uh, similar, it's an awfully small head. This is, you could imagine this as a similar sort of thing. You could say, well, I'm going to request my web page and I don't really care too much how long it's going to take because I need to go do something else and I'll be right back. So that would be something that would be asynchronous in that it is, you're not waiting, you as this person are not waiting for a response. You, you, you left and you know, at some point you're going to come back. And that is the idea behind asynchronous. It is not synchronous. Remember, is time, and asynchronous is the timing element. You're, the waiting portion of it goes away. And what you're going to see here is that asynchronous communication. This is from the WebSphere MQ Primer book. The asynchronous messaging. It happens when you see two applications must communicate. Uh, well, synchronous actually is what, how they start. Two applications must communicate, whether hosted on the same machine or separate machines, and they might have originally been designed to do so directly and synchronously. This was a common messaging technique, it's still very common actually, that was used before the introduction of WebSphere MQ and is still used. And HTTP indeed is a synchronous operation. Now, in the synchronous model, two applications that are involved, exchange information by waiting, so this is what we were talking about, from the partner, for, for the partner application to become available and then sending the information. If the partner application is unavailable for any reason, including if it is busy communicating with other applications, the information cannot be sent. All intercommunication failures that can occur between two applications must be considered individually by the applications. And that makes sense. If if we're back, uh, you know, looking at our diagram here, and you're saying, well, if this thing goes down, if Apache goes down, um, maybe it's not Apache too. It could be the database. If something goes down, and you, how do you how do you correct that? And it's up to the overall application that's running Apache in order to do that. So. It must be considered by the applications. This consideration happens whether the applications are on the same machine or on different machines that are connected by a network. This, the process requires a protocol for sending the information, confirming receipt of the information, and sending any subsequent reply. So you can see there's a lot of processing that has to happen, and it has to be held handled in code somewhere. And in this case, of course, that's that's clearly the application. But if you place a WebSphere MQ infrastructure between the two applications, it allows the communication to become asynchronous. One application places the information for the partner on, in a message on a queue, and the partner application processes this information when it is available. So it literally just sits there and then lets it go and then continues processing something else. If required, it can then send a reply back, uh, a reply message back to the originator. The applications do not need to be concerned with the communication failures or recovery. So again, we have seen this multiple times. I just want to drive home this point. So if we are here and you know, now let's use the messaging system, right? We're talking about application A and application B. And remember, we have now this endpoint, this uh, channel adapter endpoint sitting right here. And the same applies here in the case of B, right? We have this adapter. And that is the component, this endpoint, the channel adapter, the thing that is using MQI, all these things we talked about earlier. That is the component that is going to deal with any problems in the transmission. And of course, then in here is the MQ infrastructure. So I'm just going to call this MQ for now. And again, that communication goes like this. It's communicating in and out potentially here. And the same applies here, in and out. So 
the point here is that again if there is the application does not care how or even if the message gets there it's simply going to put the message here it's going to send it off use the end point to get the information off of its workload and put it in a queue and obviously that queue is going to be held on the queue manager so it's going to be here someplace and the same thing applies over here on b so the processing that's involved does not have anything to do really with b or with a they are able to asynchronously process the information. It's not waiting for a response. It's just putting the message out there on a queue and, and, and actually doesn't even know much about that queue. It just simply knows when the name of the queue. It's going to put it on the endpoint. A would put that on the endpoint and let it run. And then let message queue, MQ, the, inf the middleware solution, determine all of the uh, routing issues and fix all the routing issues on its own. And you can imagine all of the different scenarios where things could go wrong. The, the, the MQ system might be down. That's unusual, but it might be down. Why not? That's possible. Maybe B is down. That's possible. But notice that A can still keep going. You know, in this tightly coupled scenarios we talked about earlier, where we had Apache here and we had its database here, um, these were tightly coupled. If this went down, the whole system went down. And in this case, the whole system would not go down because the messaging messages would be queued up uh, would be sent out here through the endpoint. And if the system is down, well, guess what? The message would still have left A, it would have gone essentially from here to here. So it would have gone from A to E. And then here we're going to assume MQ is open, is, is running. And then at this point is where things went wrong. And yet that message, as soon as B comes back up online, then the whole system will keep running again. So once that's back up, the whole system is back up again and none of this data that was being transferred between a and e and m is lost it's still available and that is the one of the major advantages of mq in this asynchronous model now there is one caveat here that we need to talk about which is that there must be synchronous communication between the client and the queue manager so as we saw before remember that our A is essentially just offloading a bunch of work onto E, and it lets E and the message Q system, MQ, figure out all of the routing, what's up, what's down, and so on. But you must have synchronous communication between E and MQ. And if that goes down right here, then you can have a problem. Uh, but the point is, of course, if that is not the case, and usually the MQ system is a, like a cluster and it, it's usually highly available because you never want it to go down, um, you know, if, if, if that is the case, then again, the point is that if you can have a C and you can have a D and you can have an E, all these systems here, let's say F so we don't confuse with the other E, but all of these can potentially go down on you, and potentially even at once, although that would be pretty horrible, but, you know, that could happen. And still the messages that you have been placing on these queues here will still eventually once these machines come back up will be delivered because this is reliable communication this is not a, you know best attempt at trying to get these uh, messages off this is but it's not best effort these are going to eventually flow through the system to wherever they need to go